Hello, I'm Jürgen Bellmann from Sophistic and I want to show you something about concrete shell design and finite element programs. We presented our new technique on the Munich Concrete Seminar in 2017. If we first look to beam elements, we have frames and bridges. On bridges, we usually have a beam element because the design codes are mainly focused on them. The bending is not so difficult, normal force into bendings for a B-axial bending, but the shear is more complicated because we have additionally the torsional moment. Using shells, it must not always be a curved shell. Also in a building, we have a lot of plates and shells. In bridges, we have this skew deck and the abutment. Now we have three normal forces and three bending moments. While the MXY is not really a torsion, it only turns the main bending moment M1 and M2. Therefore, the shear is much more simple because it is only a vector and the vector gives only a main shear force. How did we design this in the past? We had our tables for slabs and influence areas and these bending moments in MX and MY were just calculated in a uniaxial simple design. The main problem in a finite element program is that the main tension direction is not in the direction of the reinforcement. And if we have tension under 45 degrees on the reinforcement mesh, it is distorted and needs a compression strut. We can show this very well on a simple model. Here the reinforcement cannot carry anything, only if we have this compression strut. We have mainly four design concepts in finite element programs. In Germany we have the Baumann design. In the English world we have the wood armor method and in France the Capra Mori method. In the Eurocode we also find a sandwich model. The Baumann design was first set in 1972 by Dr. Baumann at the Technical University of Munich. It divides the forces into two disks on top and on bottom and these disks are then designed using the real reinforcement direction. To get the lever arm, we use four simple uniaxial designs for the main normal force direction and the main bending moment direction. Then the forces are transformed to an upper and lower disk and designed according to Bauma, that is including the compression strut. The next method is the wood armor method. This is mainly a uniaxial design in two directions where the bending moment MXX is increased by the MXY, unfavorable so that it gets bigger. On the normal force side we can increase the normal force to get a maximum reinforcement or use a negative sign to get a maximum concrete compression. Then these forces are simply designed with a uniaxial design. Also the Capra-Mori method uses a uniaxial design but in different directions every 5 or 10 degrees. The shell forces are transformed into each direction and the necessary reinforcement is then transformed into the reinforcement directions. The sandwich model of Eurocode is nearly the same as the Baumann design because the forces are also divided into two disks on top and of bottom of the slab. If we compare the four methods, we find that in the ultimate limit state, all methods give nearly the same necessary reinforcement. But on the SLS level, the results are not okay. To understand this, we again show our little slab with this element and we assume on the bottom side a normal force in this direction of 101 and 99 in the other direction. We can divide this into 100-100 isotropic tension and a slight shear. If we take the ultimate limit design in the first step 100-100, 
the two reinforcements can get a maximum strain of 25 per mil isotropic and if we add the shear this reinforcement must first touch the concrete and this gives here a horizontal strain of 50 per mil. Now you may say what a nonsense 50 per mil can never occur in a slab. Because if we assume 50 per mil on the bottom and 2 per mil on the top, the element would like to get longer. So I checked this in a real nonlinear analysis of the slab. And if we look to this corner here, the main curvature occurs over the edge and the elements would like to get longer, but they cannot get longer because the slab is here on the other side, so it creates a compression normal force, and this compression normal force due to the elongation of the elements is then shortcut in other regions. So we get also horizontal deflections, Ux and Uy, due to the lengthening of the crack effect. The correct development looks quite okay, but if we would take a normal bridge with maybe 100 load positions and 4 temperatures and 5 settlements, it would be necessary to calculate 2000 load cases nonlinear. This is not practical in a normal way. We usually make a linear analysis of our forces. The linear forces are superposed and then we want to make a design of a single element. And then we get this compression strut and the high strain. If we compare the design procedures in the SLS, we see the wood armor method and the Capra Mori method will only get tension in all directions for this element and no compression strut will occur. The Baumann design and the sandwich model also have a big disadvantage because the tension in the two zones would give a constant stress in the two discs. So, why not iterate for shells in the same manner as we do it for beam elements? We see it here on the right. The iteration gives a very precise result of the strain. It would be necessary to take the six strain parameters, three strains and three curvatures, and to find equilibrium of the six inner forces and the outer forces. This we made in Sophistic, and here you see a result. The iteration goes on. When the tension in the reinforcement increases, we really get here a compression vertically to the tension. We call this a layer design because we divide our slab into layers. We first make an approach to the strains. From this we calculate the stresses. If it is a B-axial compression, we take into account the Poisson ratio. If it is only a uniaxial compression with tension in the other side, we make a uniaxial behavior. And also the reinforcement takes a uniaxial stress law. But we can include material stress strain curves, maybe for ULS or SLS. Then we integrate the stresses to forces. If the inner forces and outer forces are not in equilibrium, we go back and correct our curvature. This is quite easy if we have enough reinforcement in the SLS. In the ULS, we will reach the strain limits and then we have to increase the reinforcement and continue the iteration. Of course, this is not so easy because now we have seven or eight unknowns and only six target forces. If we look to the result of our new layer design for this element, we really find a high tension in the concrete of 58 per mil. In the reinforcement, we have only 25 per mil in each direction, but in this horizontal direction, we have 50 per mil and the outer concrete layer lies a little bit lower. If we take an element with a tension on the top, we can very good see the cracks crossing the reinforcement here under 45 degrees. Here we have the compression with B axial compression. Here we have a little kink because in this area we have only a uniaxial compression 
without Poisson ratio. The new layer design gives us also the opportunity to include multiple layers, here three in x direction and three in y, so six layers on bottom and six layers on top. And we can also use skew reinforcement meshes. Tendons can also be included, the tendons are smeared. If you look to this element, this element has no tendon inside, but we can smear the tendons a little bit to the right and to the left. And so, especially for the decompression check, we get very precise results. Here we also see the big difference between an ultimate limit design, where we reach the strain limits to get required reinforcement, and an SLS design, where we have low strains and real stresses. As the iteration of the strains is very time consuming, it is not the default in our program for the ultimate limit state. Of course, if you have only 1000 elements, it is not a problem, but in a big building with 50,000 elements, it will take some time. So the default for the ultimate limit state is the Baumann method. Only if we have a pre-stressed system, we use the layer design. Or if we have two or three layered reinforcement. Or in the SLS design, if we want to make a real stress check. The simple crack with check runs with the old Baumann method by default. So we can now conclude. In the ultimate limit state, we now have an exact equilibrium, and in the SLS, we get real stress results. Thank you for your attention.